Hi, I'm Dave Mason, president of ASC. Today I'm going to walk you through the ins and outs of the interview process for an engineering position at ASC. We are always looking for top engineering talent to staff our mechanical, electrical, and controls departments. If you're an engineer who is smart, ambitious, and ready for a challenge, then we really want to talk to you. You're watching this video, so you probably already know a little bit about our company, but if not, then I encourage you to view our website and social media channels on Facebook and YouTube. These will give you a good insight into the company and our overall culture. Then, when you're ready to apply, you just need to contact your human resources department and send your resume. If you're a recent grad, don't forget to also send in your college transcripts. If we're impressed with your resume and we think you might be a good fit for our company, then you'll be invited to begin our five-round interview process. You'll first receive a call from our HR department to schedule a first round phone interview with one of our engineering managers. During this interview, our manager will ask you about your resume, your experiences, and will also try to get a good feel about you as a person. If everything goes well during that initial interview, you'll be invited to the second round, which is an interview at ASC. A few days before you're scheduled to visit, we'll send you a job application form and a copy of our Econoclave Encyclopedia. The Encyclopedia is a 90-page document that explains many features of our main product, the Econoclave. We will expect you to read most of this document to familiarize yourself with the parts and pieces of our product prior to the visit. The more you read and comprehend, the better your interview will go. When you arrive at ASC, you will meet again with the same manager who will spend more time digging down into the details of your past experiences, previous jobs, school projects, software skills, project skills, and hobbies. During this round, you'll want to bring your A-game and be prepared to sell yourself as the best candidate for the job. If you successfully make it to the third round, you'll have an opportunity to accompany the manager on a walking tour of our fabrication facility. During this tour, you will be questioned about different parts and sub-assemblies of the Econoclave. Needless to say, if you haven't read first the encyclopedia, you will fail this round. If you make a good impression during the tour, you'll be on your way to the fourth round. This round involves a discussion about culture and values and will also provide you an opportunity to ask more questions to the manager. Once you've passed this round, you'll end your day with a round five meetup with Bob Cherry, ASC's Director of Engineering. Bob will ask his own set of questions and challenge you a bit more on Econoclave Technical. So that's the five round interview process. To give you some further insight into how to succeed at this process, I'm going to now introduce you to Bob and Elise, our Mechanical Engineering Manager. We're going to discuss some useful tips and some do's and don'ts of the interview process. Okay, so I'm here with Bob Cherry, Director of Engineering, and Elise Riley, Mechanical Engineering Manager. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. Hey. So uh, we're going to talk ab about uh, what we're interested in in hearing and seeing with a, with a new engineering uh, interviewee and uh, the do's and don'ts of, of what we're going to recommend to the, to the interviewer. Um, to start with, I think we're going we're gonna to look at uh, how you prepare for the interview. One of the good ways of being successful for an interview here is making sure you prepare by looking at our company website, YouTube page, you can look at our Facebook page. You can learn a lot about our company, about autoclaves, about who our customers are, um, and about our culture here uh, at ASC. Uh, let's talk a little bit about first impressions. Uh, for me, um, obviously the first time I meet someone, um, I'm, gonna, I'm interested in, do they have a firm handshake? Uh, are they looking me you know, straight in, in the eye? Uh, do they seem happy or excited to, to meet me? Um, those are the things that, that you want to think about when you walk into your first interview. When I'm describing the job position to you, I would like to see that you're interested in it. There's a lot of various tasks that go into the mechanical engineering position, a different uh, engineering topics and project management topics. Maybe show some interest and have some prepared uh, experiences that fall into those categories. When we're walking through the facility, I want to see you engaged and walking next to me. I don't want to see you trailing behind or maybe be too rushed. When we're walking you around the plant and you're, you're seeing people smile at other people, that makes a difference. People notice, hey, that guy looked like a, like a nice guy. You know, those kind of impressions uh, make a difference in the outcome of your interview. So the resume and for the younger uh, graduates, the transcript are an important part of this process. Uh, when, we, when we read through your resume, um, we're going we're gonna to basically read through it with you in the room and we're going to ask you questions about each of those individual um, items on your resume. Um, for me, what I'm interested in is, is asking about your different experiences that you lay out in there. Um, if, you're in, if you've got hobbies, if you have specific jobs that you've done in the past, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to dig down and try to figure out what you did there. Were you instrumental in, that, in those individual efforts or those companies? So be prepared to talk about each element of your resume. Don't, don't come in and, and forget what, what is actually on your resume. Um, you know, be the expert at each of those entries and be able to really describe what you did on them. Some of the things I look for are uh, obvious things like grammar and spelling. If, if you have grammar and spelling errors in your, trans, in your resume, that's giving me an indication that you're not really paying attention to detail and, and it won't, that'll be a red flag for me. Another thing is if there are gaps between jobs or between uh, experiences on your resume, I'll ask you about those gaps. You know, what were you doing between those, uh, those two jobs or why did you take a break from school? And sometimes it's a perfectly legitimate reason, but it, you know, be prepared to answer that question. It's a common question that I'll ask. For new grads who are coming straight out of school, we will require a transcript. And the reason that we have that is we're, we're gonna look at each of your individual courses. We're gonna look for the high and the low points of your, of your schooling. Um, often, look, everyone has high and low points. It's, it's unique to have everything high. So um, what, we're gonna kind of ask questions about those classes that you might have not done so well on, and we're gonna ask why did that happen, um, and we're gonna be interested in, in how you explain that you know C or even that that D that you might have gotten. So don't don't be surprised when we, we start asking relevant questions about those individual courses. If your transcript reflects that you have great grades and you didn't have a down quarter, I want to hear about what classes you were most interested in, which ones piqued your interest, and which ones were maybe your favorite. One of the key factors that we're interested in is your experiences, and so whether it's it's generated from your resume or it's just in discussion. We're going to want to hear about your experiences. Um, you know, if it's life experiences, that's that's great. Business experience, if you've got certain things, and and we're looking for successes that you might have had. And and if you're willing to to discuss, you know, individual failures, that's a good thing too, because you can always talk about a failure in in the in the way in which you overcame those specific things and learned from them. And so, be prepared to to come here with with discussion points about each of, of different experiences that, be, that you've had in your life up till now. So while you're interviewing and you're going through your experiences and your resume and, and basically your story, use the opportunity to sell yourself. You know, when the interviewer asks you a question, try, to, try not to give very short, brief, one word or very short answers, yes or no answers. This is an opportunity for you. You've made it this far, it's great. Now you really have to sell yourself and give full answers to the questions. I am often asked uh, by applicants what they should wear. Is there any, any type of business attire that's required here? We are fairly casual at ASC. Um, obviously, we're not looking for you to come in with you know, flip-flops on, but uh, if, if you want to wear regular slacks or, or jeans and then a nice uh, long sleeve shirt or a, a dress or you know anything that's business casual that's that's just perfect we are not looking for someone with a three-piece suit on um, and and a tie because often uh, people end up looking very stiff and uncomfortable and we're looking for a more comfortable uh, attire we are also interested in looking at, at the skills that that you have generated over your specific tenure whether it's during school or it's in the, in the different jobs that you've had um, throughout your life. And so skills are an important factor. We're going to ask you, you know, whether you have certain software skills. Um, obviously, Microsoft products are, are a big deal. You, you really need to be adept at, at, at Word, Excel. Um, and uh, additionally, if you've got AutoCAD or Inventor or other type of SolidWorks experience, you, you want to be able to talk about that and, and kind of sell us on, on your ability to use those tools. If you come in with FEA or CFD experience, that's something that we would like to hear more about. The software that we use for FEA is ANSYS and CFD is ANSYS AIM. Solid modeling is very important in the mechanical engineering department. If you are a quick modeler, you're not going to get hung up on the software alone. The design is where you should be putting that key effort into it. The modeling should be a, a tool that you can use to propel your design and express your design for approval. One of the key factors that we will look for, and everyone interviewing will ultimately have to, uh, at some point prior to being hired, will have to take a typing test. Um, we, you know, we're looking for someone who can type, you know, 
40 words a minute approximately or more. Now for, for most you know, young applicants, that's a, that's a very normal process, but um, we wanna make sure that, that if you are a one, per, one person or one you know, finger typer and you type 15 words a minute, the likelihood of you being able to succeed in this fast paced environment is probably low. So if you are gonna interview, make sure that you do uh, hone up on your typing skills. We're gonna be sending you the Econoclave Encyclopedia. That document talks about all the different subsystems and the anatomy of the autoclave. During your tour, I wanna to hear a lot about what you learned from the document and what subsystems you've learned about. Life is about more than work, so uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to talk to us about your hobbies or sports or how you, you know, the type of things that, that you do when you're not working because uh, everyone at ASC, um, at, we have lives here and we have lives out, outside of work and, and uh, believe it or not, many of the, of the interests that, that you have, we might also have. So it's a, when, you, when you talk about those, those interests and you're excited about out, outside interests, that, that's gonna make us excited about you. We have a great group of mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and controls engineers here at ASC, and they have a wide variety of hobbies. Some of them play basketball, softball, golf, video games, board games. There's, there's no shortage of things to do. So when you're, we ask you about hobbies, it's because we want to know, you know that you'll fit in with the rest of, rest of the group here at ASC, and um, it's, an, it's a good way for you to make a connection with the people that you're interviewing with and say, oh yeah, I think that person might fit in here really well. Our interest is to figure out who you are as a person as, as well as how well you're gonna do on, on the job in terms of skill. So, so that's, that's an important factor to, to come to the interview with. I also appreciate getting a follow-up letter or a thank you letter from candidates. It shows me that they really are interested in the position and that they're interested in going to the next step in, in the process. Okay, so that's a wrap up for the video today. I wanna to thank Bob and Elise for, for taking part in uh, trying to give you some extra information about the interview process. Uh, you know, we highly suggest that you follow some of these tips and do's and don'ts because it'll, it'll ultimately result in a successful interview process for you. So we are very excited uh, if you do Make the journey over and, and take part in an interview. We'll be happy to see you. And uh, if everything works out, we would, we would love to have you as a, one of our newest ASC engineers. So thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you.